Hello. This is Kate Kelly. <laughs> Many a healthy discussion about how to best film for Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, this week we've had a few questions over the past week from people looking to put their money into property investment. First time property investors looking for some tips. So we thought maybe if there was one or two out there, we might be able to provide some advice. So here we go. Yeah, definitely not financial advice. Again, it's just opinions and thoughts. <laughs> So as we've discussed with you before, we were very surprised by the amount of investors looking to buy property and indicating to us they would like to buy property post lockdown. And they weren't the seasoned invest investors who buy and sell all the time, you know, doesn't matter what market. And those kind of investors had a, have a very clear strategy, whether it be a yield based or capital gains based strategy, and they'll, and they'll kind of choose um, properties as they come up. It's more the mum and dad investor, which we don't love the... Oh, I hate that. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of patronising. But anyway, those are the people that are looking to put their money in something other than term deposits. But for some people, it can be quite overwhelming. Yeah. So um, there are some considerations which would be best to know uh, if you're going out searching for a rental property. So uh, we'll discuss them with you today. First thing, establishing a budget. So as with any home purchase, you, you normally start off by going to your mortgage broker and saying, how much money can I borrow? Now, right at the moment, we talked about serviceability last week. Uh, over the past five years, uh, real, um, interest rates have nearly halved. So the cost of owning a million dollar property is the same as it was five years ago to own a $500,000 property. So the serviceability of property is really great. And especially in places like Wellington, which has sky high rents, in fact, the highest in the country, you can almost buy, and in a lot of cases actually buy, a property that's covering all the outgoings, the rates and the insurance, and providing a cash flow from the outset. So when you're establishing your budget, first of all, find out how much money you can borrow and then look to establish a yield or, or an amount of money or an interest rate return that you would like to get on that money. So that would be the very first thing. But when you're going out looking for a property, it's not an emotional purchase. So when you're looking for a um, rental property, establish the kind of properties that fall within your budget and then put in an offer based on the kind of yield you'd like to get for your money. It's very hard not to fall in love with a beautifully dressed home, but if but if you're offering on property and it doesn't meet up to your investment criteria, then walk away and know that there's going to be another one. It's not a home that you're going to inhabit, so you don't need to love it to pieces. You just need to know that tenants are going to love it. Okay. So step two, researching the market. So as with any kind of transaction, it does take a while to build your market knowledge. So our recommendation would be, especially if you're looking to purchase in spring, is that you start going to open homes now, get a feel for the properties that you can get for your money. And the best way to do that is visit multiple open homes, call your agent after the transaction say, or ask to be kept informed of the sale price. And if the agent is a little bit funny about giving it to you, which sometimes they can be, Keep an eye out on homes who actually updates their data really regularly. And then you'll start getting a feel for, hey, that didn't fall into my budget, but that one did. And, and by doing that, you'll be able to hone your search and really kind of get a feel for what it is. So when you're ready to buy, you know how much money to put down and what kind of yield you're going to get back on that. Yeah, I think when you, when I mean, it's about like research, it's like you make the decision to go out there and you think, you know, oh, it'll be easy. I'll just find something, it'll work. But that work, that, that time you spend looking and researching is really going to pay off. And that kind of leads on to, like, what kind of property do you want and the, the target market that you're kind of after with your rental? Because rental properties can attract different types of people. So if we talk about inner city type properties um, and around the fringe of the CBD, very di a different mixture, kind of young professional students. Um, and they tend to look at properties more by the room uh, as opposed to the whole property as you start to drift out towards the suburbs you'll get more of that people will look at taking the whole house and have a different dynamic. It might be three or four people in the house or families. But um, so that's really important to establish the kind of rental property that you want and the type of tenants that you want because um, a, better, a better quarterly property will attract a better tenant, won't it? So if you're going to buy a CBD based property, but it's a low quality of property, you're probably going to attract students and a lot of people won't want students, do they? Yeah, I mean, and they come with their, their problems and pitfalls and more, couches. Um, <laughs> more energy required to kind of upkeep. But, you know, that's okay. If you're happy to do that and you manage it well and you're on top of it, fantastic. 
uh, but sometimes it's just easier to get a property that people go, great, nice, nice suburban type property. It's going to rent well, nice and tidy, nice family's going to come in and they're going to look after it. So just establishing what kind of type of property that you want uh, is really important. So if you went and bought a four bedroom property, who do you think in the suburbs, that's most likely to be a family home, isn't yeah, it? Highly likely, yeah. You know, important schools come into the consideration when people start thinking about that. If you want to attract families, that is. So I was talking to a property manager recently and, and in my head I was thinking, oh, property would be a great tenant. But he said that, um, sorry, a family would be a great tenant, but families in his mind aren't great tenants. And, and the reason is it's quite a lot of wear and tear why, why you so it's a very uh, families don't make a great tenant. No, I'm not saying they don't make a great tenant, but they place a lot of wear and tear okay. on your property, and because they like this is from a property manager, and because they like to take a tenancy for longer, it um, it restricts your ability to get in there and do that to you know to keep on top of deferred maintenance. Professionals will often change their you know the place that they live, you know, in a cyclical manner, whereas families might stay three, four, five years, which is wonderful in terms of occupancy. But that deferred maintenance can really get on top of you over that kind of year. That was his take on okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, when you're looking for the style of property, as I said, not an emotional purchase. So you really need to take off your "I want to live in a beautiful character home" hat because a beautiful character home can often be kind of cold and damp and come with a raft of maintenance costs versus tenants who love to work, um, live in modern, warm, dry homes that don't put mould on their clothes in the yep. wardrobe. Tenants really love a house with heating, heat pumps, central heating. All of those kind of things when you're buying a property are great to, for attracting tenants. That is yep. what they are looking for. Um, so they, they almost care more about the inside than the outside. I know it's, it's easy as a buying a house that kind of outside has the appeal. Um, but for tenants, it's like not so much because it's not their house. They just want to make sure that inside is nice and comfortable, as Amanda said. And of course, the Healthy, Home Act, Healthy Homes Act was brought in. So that um, is to guarantee a minimum standard of kind of insulation, um, ventilation and heating for tenants, which is all around a great thing. But bearing in mind those, you know, that a modern home will have those already, but you may need to put those into an older style of home to a level that's going to meet those kind of requirements. Yeah. So if you were to get a building report on a property, make sure that you're looking at the thickness of the insulation, whether or not um, bathroom fans and um, range hoods are vented to the outside, and it's got a heat source. Those are really important things for meeting the Healthy Homes Act and something that you are legally required yeah. to get up to speed. And you should know if you are buying a property that is tenanted that, that's something that should be aware the tenants will be aware of Very and much. you need to be aware of as well taking that property going forward as well they can actually take you for damages can't they well yeah i mean look yeah just just be aware make sure if they, it is a tenanted property or you are buying a house you're going to tenant that you comply with with the law yeah and so rental properties don't come without their pitfalls and sometimes that can be the management of tenants um they, they tend to live in a property a little bit differently you know sometimes there'll be a, a, a arrears and rents for various reasons they may not treat your property the same way as you would treat it and so for the faint of heart it may not be for you and or you may consider popping a property manager in place and those are some of the costs that you will need to going to need to consider outside of the maintenance and the bringing it up to the right standard whether or not you can you have the time to manage tenants and or you have the will so um, property managers range from about eight percent to ten percent of your weekly rent and they may or may not charge a margin on bringing in trades so factoring into the, the costs when you're looking at the serviceability of your mortgage is really important mm -hmm. now a good property manager is wonderful and you'll almost never hear from them they'll advertise they'll get tenants they make sure that there's rent increases that the prop the management is kept up to date the rent arrears are taken care of and 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 pretty much all goes smoothly um, if you get a bad tenant, it can be quite hard to get rid of them. I mean, over COVID, I don't, I don't even know if vacancy can happen at the moment, can it? Uh, Still, yeah, maybe not. I'm sure. Anyway, all of the things that kind of consider you need to consider as you enter the property investment game and some things that you may not have yeah. considered. I think, and also Amanda touched on it before about the maintenance, the hidden costs. Um, you really need to be aware of, uh, I mean, properties are depreciating daily unless you do any work to them. And you almost want to take the attitude of, like with an apartment, they have body corporate fees, and part of that body corporate fee is a long-term maintenance fund. Um, if you can take that approach as well, I mean, you don't want to run it on a shoestring and, and defer maintenance because, you know, by the time you down the track, you've got problems, they'll just multiply, and then all of a sudden you're spending all this money. Whereas if you could just kind of like chip away at things, 
during that time you're on the market, it's a really good idea. And again, I think a good property manager will help you with that and they will identify some key things that like, hey, look, in the next year or two, we'll do a house wash, we'll do this, we'll do that. Um, but it's definitely worth, you've got to take that into consideration. It's just not a set and forget and hopefully in 10 years time, it's still gonna look the same because I can tell you it won't. And maintaining a property is imperative to re-attracting um, tenants as they vacate and you're looking to attract new yeah. ones. So if you let that maintenance get on top of you, you may have trouble re you know, attracting new tenants to the property. And of course that costs you money in you know, yeah, a vacant it, property. It's That's... cheaper to do it today than it is tomorrow. So yeah. um, don't avoid it. And for those who enter and then decide that property I mean, property owner or investment properties aren't for them, there is the consideration of a bright line test. So that's kind of a capital gains tax um, for subsequent dwellings, not on the family home. Uh, and that was extended from two years to five years. Oh, I forgot what the date was. Um, but so if you were looking to take your money back out of uh, an investment property, you would need to wait five years before you could do so without paying capital gains. So it's not a short term strategy and really no property should be, whether it's, I mean, family homes, you can't do much about that. But any property ownership should be a long term view because time in the market is better than timing the market. And so, um, you know, as we know, historically, property prices go up, they may go through kind of ebbs and flows, but overall a trend line up. So if you can stay in there and do the right things by your tenants and look to, um, you know, buy the best quality property that you can and run it like a great place for other people to live, then you should have no issues. I think time is really important. And like the longer you stay in it, you'll start to find that the, the income starts to go up and your debt goes down and then the your yield gets bigger and you're making you're making a better return on it. That's when it really pays off. It doesn't really pay off initially. This is speculation, but long term, it, it, that's when you really start to notice it. You know, after a period of time, decade, you know, 15, 20 years, uh, you look back and go, that was probably the best decision I ever made. Yeah. So if anyone's got any um, questions about property um, investment or wants to look at any of the properties that we've got on the market in, in, in terms of a potential investment, we've got some great homes at the market and they'd be really attractive to tenants. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, cool. give us a call anytime. All right, thanks. Ciao.